today we'll be talking about uh, uh, interesting use case uh, for solving scalability challenges in the monitoring area with the help of the tool Victoria Metrics. So I would give the word first to Danny to tell you a bit more. Thank you. So monitoring is something that we all have to do and deal with uh, to some extent or another. And we've noticed that many of the issues that we come across tend to repeat themselves quite a bit. And many people have the exactly same issues. So starting from the basics, uh, how monitoring looks nowadays. Uh, and this is a, uh, the found, these are the foundations, which Prometheus developed by SoundCloud, I think, established. So you have your applications and they serve metrics in Prometheus formats. Uh, there's only a few of them like counter gauge and summary. Then you have something like Prometheus, which pulls or scrapes those metrics and stores the series in its time series database. Uh, the push approach is naturally also supported. There's a querying layer, so you can get back those metrics for a specified time range or and, and with specific labels, and, and you can visualize this data. So Prometheus does a few more things also. Uh, you can configure it to create new metrics based on given expressions, and these are known as recording rules. Also, uh, it evaluates expression, uh, which we which we call alarms and can send these to alert manager. Um, so there's quite a bit going on. Um, and Prometheus is a uh, monolithic stateful application, meaning it doesn't scale horizontally um, and it stores data. So when you have to deal with load, the only thing you can do in most cases is uh, vertical scaling. So you can increase the resources that Prometheus can uh, consume, and you can also increase the resources available on the node it's running, uh, but it's only in one direction, vertical. We're going to mention it here. Most people work with a Helm chart, a community Helm chart known as QPrimitius stack, uh, which is a very popular bundle. It deploys the Prometheus operator, Prometheus itself, Grafana uh, for visualizing, Alert Manager, a bunch of exporters, and exporters are little applications that know how to serve Prometheus formatted metrics for other services, and also default alarms, dashboards, and uh, recording rules. And these come from a, another project called the Mixing Project. And we'll come back to this later. Um, so like I said, Prometheus pretty much laid the foundation for this kind of monitoring. So it has a very big ecosystem surrounding it. Virtually every application that is put out there now exports Prometheus metrics. Uh, all the applications uh, that preceded people develop exporters for those, so they can also be used uh, with Prometheus forward, please. One very common problem that we have experienced in different places uh, is Prometheus size and both. So it's very easy for Prometheus to get huge. Uh, the reason for that being, like I mentioned earlier, that uh, virtually every application exports Prometheus metrics. There are also exporters for many other applications. Uh, this uh, Prometheus size of bloat is also uh, dependent on cluster size and the type of dashboards and rules that you run against it. So the more complex your uh, queries and, and recording rules are, the more a resource Prometheus needs to run these. Um, and like we said earlier, it's only one instance usually. So if it goes down, everything goes down. Um, traditionally, there are different, many different ways to try to deal with this uh, Prometheus bloat. Um, some of the most popular I have outlined here. They include dropping labels on metrics to reduce cardinality. Uh, scraping intervals can also be increased. The targets that you scrape can be reduced or the metrics per target can also be uh, decreased. Um, but once you run out of uh, options like these uh, to deal with the, a problematic Prometheus instance, which needs too much resource, you will try and fi find some kind of helper solution. And today we'll be focusing mainly on uh, Victoria metrics, uh, which comes to play, but 
just to get it out of the way first, I'm going to mention Thanos, uh, which is another way to extend uh, and enhance Prometheus. Uh, so Thanos is not a drop in Prometheus replacement. Thanos integrates with Prometheus. Uh, and the main Thanos component is a sidecar, which runs alongside Prometheus. And it has access to Prometheus on local host and the file system. So what this sidecar does is Every couple of hours, it takes the metrics from Prometheus and ships them ships them to an object storage somewhere, right? So what you can do is you can reduce the retention on Prometheus. Thanos has more components than that. It's not just a sidecar. It also has a querying uh, service. It has a compaction service. It has a ruler and others. Uh, but it's a solution that integrates with Prometheus and helps extend it. There are other like it. There are others like it. Uh, Grafana, Mimir, and Cortex are popular names. Uh, but we will focus on Victoria metrics. And Victoria metrics is not something that integrates with Prometheus. It's something that tries to replace it uh, altogether. So Victoria metrics borrows heavily in terms of design patterns uh, uh, from Prometheus. It comes in both monolithic and cluster versions, meaning if you want, you can run a single instance monolithic, monolithic type of application of Victoria metrics. If you want, you can uh, break the application down to microservices and run those, uh, and all of them horizontally scalable. So Victoria metrics, it supports a number of ingestion protocols, so you can integrate it uh, with, with other, many other tools. Um, and like I said, the most important thing about Victoria metrics is that uh, all Prometheus functionality is broken down to microservices, and all those microservices scale horizontally. Next, we're going to talk about them. And the first thing we will see is the so called Victoria metrics cluster. Uh, this cluster includes three components, uh, two of which are stateless, and one which is stateful. So these components are VM select, VM storage, and VM insert. So uh, top to bottom, VM select is the service uh, which you connect to to send your queries and expressions to retrieve data. And VM select knows how to speak to VM storage, which is the stateful persistence layer. Uh, even though it's stateful and it's a, even though it's a stateful uh, service, VM storage can be scaled horizontally and it also supports replication. Um, the way you get data into VM storage is to VM insert, which is another application responsible for ingesting this data and sending it to VM storage. Uh, so VM select and VM insert are stateless. You can scale these, uh, you can run as many replicas as you like of these. VM storage is stateful. Uh, this is where all your metrics go, your time series, but it also it also scales horizontally, uh, and you can define uh, replication. So it's going to be highly available as well. Um, at the, at the top of the graph, you can see Grafana and Prometheus API clients mentioned. So if you were to start using a Victoria, Victoria metrics cluster now, you would configure a data source in Grafana, which will point to your VM select service. Uh, and if you wanted to ingest metrics into Victoria metrics using one of the many protocols it supports, you can see these at the bottom of the graph, uh, you would configure your clients to connect to VM insert and send your series there. Yeah, maybe worth mentioning that, as you said before, Victoria metrics can completely re replace Prometheus, but uh, depending on the use case, it can also uh, be a certain part of the whole monitoring system, integrating Prometheus as well. And that's as mentioned here, the Prometheus uh, remote API. And I'm not sure then if you would uh, mention it afterwards, but it's um, important to note that uh, even though Victoria metrics is a complete, uh, completely written from scratch, uh, it does uh, support uh, the PromQL querying language and also uh, Prometheus APIs. So yeah, it tries to follow the already established standards by yeah, the most popular Prometheus. Yes, uh, which is one of the things which is one of the things that make it a bit easier to move to Victoria metrics if you wanted to, because it will feel very familiar. 
We're going to talk about the Victoria Metrics components here, and we already mentioned a few of them, uh, VM Instinct, VM Storage, and VM Select. This is known as the Victoria Metrics cluster. Uh, the, the whole thing also has other components, and the first one you see mentioned is VM Agent. Uh, VM Agent is the bit that uh, collects or scrapes metrics from applications and exporters. Um, this is where all filtering and relabeling happens. And VM agent can also add global values and store pending data to disk. Um, once metrics are scraped, relabeled, or anything else, uh, it will push them to Victoria metrics with the remote write protocol. Um, the rules, the rules, Prometheus rules and alerts functionality is not lost also. There is another component called VM alert, uh, which is responsible for recording calls. So evaluating those recording rules and writing them back and also for evaluating alerting expressions and sending uh, firing alerts to alert manager. So very, very similar to Prometheus. In the next slide, we'll see a image you could put to uh, mention a bit about what are recording rules. I'm not sure that I would be able to explain it well, but uh, a simple explanation would be so if you have uh, like a certain query that is uh, relatively heavy uh, and uh, you need it often, um, both Prometheus and Victoria Metrics allows uh, um, having a recording rule which would uh, actually run the query upon uh, when metrics are collected and store it as a uh, the result as a different metric and this way anytime you have to query it afterwards it would be fast because you are querying one metric this is the official graph of vm agent uh, so at the top of the image you can see it's going to scrape node exporter it can get metrics from graphite agent influx db agent and others uh, your traditional Prometheus config is used by VM agent. Um, it's also going to do any relabeling. If you ask it, it's going to drop labels. If you ask it, it's going to add global labels, uh, which I think is how they achieve multi-tenancy also. And then VM agent is going to write. It's either, it's either going to write to Victoria metrics or you can use, even use it to write to a standard Prometheus uh, because the protocol is the same. Um, the next image is VM alert. This is the component that is res that that is responsible for uh, recording rules and alerts. Uh, and this image shows quite nicely how you would configure it. So VM select is going to be used for uh, executing queries and getting data. VM insert is going to be used for writing back the actual rules and new metrics that you calculate, and it's also going to evaluate your alerts. Alert expressions, if and if anything is firing, it's going to call alert manager. So very, very similar to Prometheus. Uh, the next question is, how do we deploy Victoria metrics? And I will talk about the Victoria metrics operator. There is a Helm chart, of course, and we use the Victoria metrics operator, which is heavily inspired by the Prometheus operator. So it's going to be fairly easy for people to transition transition from Prometheus operator to Victoria metrics operator. Um, so we're going to mention some of the custom resource definitions used by the operator. There are more than that. Uh, we're not going to talk about all of them. The first one is kind VM cluster, and this is the bit that deploys VM insert, VM storage, and VM select. Uh, VM agent, kind VM agent, obviously, deploys VM agent, which is going to scrape and do relabeling for you. Uh, and here it gets interesting. Regarding configuration, the custom resource for scraping targets of, of kind services is VM service scrape. And this will be very similar to what the Prometheus operator uses and we know as service monitors. For pod monitors, you have VM pod scrape. So this is going to configure scraping targets uh, for pods. For Prometheus rule, Prometheus rules, which we used to use to define alerts and recording calls, the Victoria metrics operator has a custom resource called VM rule, and it's going to work, work and look exactly the same way. So you will define your alerts and uh, your recording calls with VM rule. Uh, black box exporter, we use it many many of you probably also use it. It's used for uh, 
probing uh, endpoints, HTTP, and not only HTTP endpoints, um, and exporting metrics based on responses. Uh, you can configure that with a VM probe in Victoria metrics or with the probe resource with the Prometheus operator. And conveniently, the, the Victoria metrics operator can also be used to deploy an alert manager instance with the VM alert manager kind. It has many other custom resources, uh, but we're going to stop here regarding this. So they follow the uh, popular declarative model, the operator model. It's quite easy and convenient to, to deploy it and to maintain it. Um, the Helm chart not only deploys the operator, uh, but also deploys some exporters, which is handy. I think node exporter is definitely in included, cube state metrics, uh, things like this. The only thing that perhaps is currently lacking from the standard Helm chart to deploying the operator is standard dashboards, alarms, and recording rules. We mentioned earlier a bundle called Cube Prometheus Stack, which everybody loves because it comes with the default dashboards, alerts, and rules, which are derived from the mixing project. And the mixing project is on GitHub. You can go look it up. Uh, it's basically JSON at templates uh, for building set dashboards, alerts, and rules. Uh, but the Cube Prometheus Stack chart bundles the mixing uh, stuff very well in that it works out of the box. So when you deploy it, you're going to have all your default dashboards and your default alarms and your default recording tools. If you wanted to use the mixing project with Victoria metrics, you can do it. Uh, so you can build uh, your own uh, mixing files, uh, but it's not going to work straight out of the box. In fact, there was a fair amount of effort from SRE people uh, to get it to work with Victoria metrics. Uh, but it's doable. The best things you're used to from the Cube Prometheus stack chart, you can also get them with Victoria metrics, but it's going to involve a little bit of extra effort uh, from people who understand a, a good with PromQL and other stuff, um, among other things. Maybe worth mentioning when uh, when you said about uh, it's fairly easy to deploy it in this mode with uh, the Helm chart. Uh, there is actually, uh, Danny briefly touched on it, there is an, another way to deploy Victoria metrics uh, in uh, the single mode instead of the VM cluster mode. So the single mode would have just a single component for uh, yeah, the otherwise three different microservices, which uh, to some extent more resembles uh, the Prometheus deployment. And it it is, uh, yeah good to use for smaller scale environments where you don't need this whole complexity and additional configuration. Or if you just want to try it out. Something we need to mention is how easy or not it is to transition from a working Prometheus instance, a working Prometheus deployment to Victoria metrics. We did this in one of our projects and Misha will talk more about this. But uh, let me just mention a couple of things. The first thing is Victoria metrics people, they try to make it easy for you in that the operator knows how to convert Prometheus operator resources to Victoria metrics operator resources. So I didn't use that, but in theory, uh, it should be able to handle your already existing Prometheus rule uh, and, and, um, and service monitor resources, for example. Yeah, and Michu will talk more about our use case now. Thanks, Danny. Uh, so uh, we're going to give this example with uh, uh, one of our clients, which uh, is actually a company that uh, develops web portals, but also uh, offers uh, web portals as a service, uh, meaning that uh, through an interface, uh, an end customer might spin up uh, their own portal website, which is a composition of a set of microservices, the majority of which are actually WordPress-based with a combination of uh, some APIs, Elasticsearch, and so on. Uh, we do have other things uh, running on their cluster, but I would say this is the uh, majority of things. So it's actually uh, deployed as a vanilla Kubernetes installation, um, not on a, one of the popular hyperscalers where you have uh, uh, managed Kubernetes service. Uh, so um, yeah, we do need to handle a lot of the inner workings of Kubernetes. There is also a storage system, um, which uh, actually uh, there are volumes that the cloud, cloud provider uh, provides, but uh, yeah, uh, 
when digging a bit further, we realized that uh, the, the volumes that uh, are provided as uh, managed volumes by the cloud provider are actually underneath based on the CEF uh, storage system. So we do have both uh, our CEF for certain purposes for uh, read write many and for normal volumes, volumes we do have the cloud volumes which um, I'm mentioning it because they are very limited in terms of performance. There are no ways to optimize up until the, yeah, uh, not more than the limits which the call provider uh, is, has set. Uh, so maybe worth mentioning that uh, although we started uh, a bit smaller at the time, uh, it was uh, constantly growing throughout the years up until now where we have uh, about 50 worker nodes. Uh, each node has uh, 32 gigabytes of memory and eight CPUs. And uh, we have uh, a total of uh, more than 5,000 pods uh, running, but that might include some uh, um, already completed jobs and so on. And there are more than uh, 1,200 namespaces uh, at the time of writing. We do have uh, this separate, and we can show it on the other um, on the other graph. Uh, we have some nodes which are uh, dedicated just for infrastructure services because at some point uh, yeah, the services like the monitoring service or logging service uh, they are so um, yeah, resource intensive that uh, they could impact uh, other normal workloads. And one typical thing, by the way, for uh, this deployment is that the majority of workloads we have here are typically lightweight, but uh, a lot uh, in terms of count, although not all of them, like things like Elasticsearch for database and so on, and some databases which are stored in the cluster uh, have more resource requirements, but uh, smaller portals typically tend to start uh, only a single port and then scale up only when uh, load is, uh, uh, hits the system. And this is just one example where uh, yeah, we see that uh, for, uh, from cube state metrics, uh, every single scrape uh, would return like uh, more than half a million records that the monitoring system would have to process. And what was the challenge? Of course, we started with Prometheus. Uh, yeah, we tried to make uh, incremental optimizations as we go. Uh, the memory requirements of Promete Prometheus were always growing, so yeah. Uh, we we'll, we eventually hit a, a spot where Prometheus was working alone on a single node, which is the um, biggest node allowed for from a certain group uh, that is uh, cost effective with 32 gigabytes. And at some point, we couldn't raise uh, uh, its memory limits any anymore. We kind of hit the bottleneck of the uh, vertical scaling. There are many examples where we faced issues that uh, yeah, I'm sure that for every each, uh, each one of them, uh, given investing uh, yeah, the needed effort of uh, some of the things that uh, Danny said uh, could have made the situation better. But at some point, uh, yeah, uh, it was getting frustrating that uh, we had to uh, yeah, work a lot on this Prometheus to just keep it afloat. Uh, so well, some of the examples uh, have when, for example, three people would open a more heavy dashboard, Prometheus would crash. Uh, we have, we have uh, this hard limit that even uh, at the time when we tried to uh, go beyond, uh, let's say, 25 gigabytes of RAM, um, the, the nodes started to crash because there are some reserves that we need to keep for uh, the actual Kubernetes node to remain running. Um, there was this thing that when when it crashed, it very often took a lot of time for the uh, wall. Those are, I think, comes from right ahead walks um, to be processed during startup. And uh, yeah, typically, when you have a startup uh, delay for the uh, wildness and readiness probes, uh, yeah, the wildness checks would actually start a lot sooner than uh, Prometheus was actually available, and they would determine uh, Prometheus is not up. Uh, on the retry count and kill it again and then the whole procedure starts from the beginning so we were forced to raise the initial startup delay to more than 10 minutes so that it can even start and there are uh, other use cases that we don't have here in particular but uh, we faced in other uh, customers like um, as Danny mentioned uh, the high cardinality I'm not sure if we explained well what that actually means uh, but in 
simple words uh, it's uh, kind of for a, uh, a certain metric uh, every combination of labels would be a different time time series so yeah you can imagine uh, we can expect uh, pretty normal high cardinality if we have uh, 5000 pods so every uh, metric that is uh, pot related would be a different time series but there are other cases as well where uh, for example, accidentally we added uh, request ID on a uh, Inger system to be as a uh, marked as a, a label, and so you can imagine every request that hit the system would actually create a new data series, which quickly crashes the system, and it's not very easy to get out of that situation. Uh, so for our deployment, uh, we went for the cluster setup, of course, because we were uh, aiming to solve this, uh, particularly this uh, scalability challenge, making use of the design of Victoria metrics, which is uh, already prepared for uh, scaling horizontally for high availability and uh, having the certain operations split up to microservices that you could uh, uh, scale up individually. We have a set of <coughs> uh, VM inserts, VM selects. Uh, we have two VM agents that we would talk about uh, later why uh, there are two. And uh, we have some uh, VM storage pods which handle the uh, writing to the system. And then we have a bunch of exporters, not only the standard ones uh, like uh, Kubelet, KubeState Metrics, Node Exporter, uh, C Advisor, but also some that we haven't mentioned here in particular, like uh, uh, the Bercona database exporter, Ceph uh, exporter. Uh, yeah, we have some here like the RabbitMQ exporter, Blackbox exporter, certificate uh, exporter for monitoring certificate validity and so on. I, I can show you a bit the, the system. Uh, so bef before we go to that, uh, just want to say that uh, when we deployed it, didn't actually work out of the box. So in order to um, get that uh, yeah, magnitude of uh, scalability, um, yeah, one needs to put up a lot of effort to tune the system appropriately to the uh, load that is present. Uh, so some of the things I can show you, uh, yeah, the sharding done on VM agent, uh, the processing of uh, recording rules with VM alert, um, and uh, yeah, some limits and timeouts uh, on every level, which uh, into Victoria Metrics uh, introduces to kind of protect itself from overload. Uh, and of course, maybe the most uh, critical part was the uh, performance bottleneck on the, sto the storage uh, layer. Uh, so one very important thing that um, the guys from Victoria Metrics mentioned is that um, uh, Victoria would. Uh, we uh, try to tolerate availability over consistency. So uh, if it hits uh, yeah, some limits and timeouts, uh, uh, you can get, get gaps of data, but uh, to ensure at least that the system continues to run. So yeah, there are some settings, by the way, where which you can change this behavior, but uh, yeah, the idea of the system uh, is kind of to uh, put focus on, on that availability. So maybe one interesting one uh, was the metrics delay problem. It's uh, relatively uh, known, even documented on Victoria Metrics site. Uh, so probably uh, you noticed uh, the different way Victoria Metrics works when it comes to recording rules. So if with Prometheus everything is done by one process and it's in your pipeline, so you collect the metrics, label them, run the recording rules, record everything, and so on. This this process here is decoupled. So uh, when uh, the normal flow from VM agent through VM insert uh, records uh, the actual row metrics, uh, then uh, in a decoupled way, asynchronously, VM alert would start to read those metrics and uh, yeah, evaluate them for alert thresholds, uh, but also uh, yes, uh, calculate the recording rules and write them back. Uh, so there is, I think, this animation. Let me try to show it. Uh, I think it visualizes very well what could happen. So if we have large amounts of data, there might be delays introduced uh, when writing them to the data source. And if uh, VM alert valuation 
tries to query a certain time in the time frame um, series database, it might not have all the metrics available already recorded. Uh, so typically a solution for this on heavily loaded systems, although there is already a default uh, delay, we could uh, increase the uh, evaluation delay and uh, the lookback parameters, which would put the pointer a bit earlier uh, during the, the execution. However, if uh, uh, the, the gap is big, we would also notice it, and let me see if I can show it somewhere, on some of the Grafana dashboards afterwards, uh, where you would see uh, some metrics which are directly recorded are near real time, while uh, some um, graphs that uh, include uh, uh, recording rules inside would have this delay when, when they are shown. But at least this uh, guarantees that uh, yeah, we are always working with the full date. Mm. Like, for example, uh, the VM agent. So uh, in, in the VM agent, uh, we have uh, the capability to uh, shard the collection of metrics. So instead of one agent going through all the targets, all the exporters and collecting everything, we can have a multitude of agents. And I think I can show it here. Uh, that uh, each would get a certain set of targets to uh, parse and then record to the system. Uh, you can see it here. Um, we've added this label just so it's more clear that uh, from the um, ingress um, targets, uh, which I think come from the black box exporter, which automatically would discover ingress resources and uh, set up a monitor for them. Uh, we have about 580 which land up on shard one and because this url by the way is a uh, is a kubernetes service uh, when we refresh a couple of times it can uh, point us to the other uh, one of the other shards maybe not ah, here here it is and you can see on on this one it uh, landed up about 600 of uh, those same targets so to some extent they distribute the load amongst themselves. Uh, however, there is a problem if uh, we have just a single uh, target for a certain type. If we go to cube state metrics, uh, because it's a single uh, endpoint, it would be collected by a single VM agent, uh, depending on the algorithm which uh, yeah, landed be doing that. And uh, you can see here we have large quantities of uh, samples collected and this takes time so this is almost five seconds just for this collection you can see that it has a lot more to process over and this happens of course on every uh, i forgot how many but i think the scraping interval was 25 seconds something like that uh, so uh, related to that there are many uh, timeouts and uh, yes uh, buffer sizes that need to be tweaked. The good thing is that usually the system would work in their walks uh, if uh, it reaches uh, a certain timeout or um, a limit and saying, yeah, okay, dropping this because whatever, uh, it's yeah above one gigabyte or the block size is uh, bigger than this and so on. So we really had to tweak all those parameters according to the current uh, system. There are other interesting places uh, also if we go into uh, VM insert, which is a component that yeah uh, we can talk about, I think, here. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe I can mention some of those on the, on the next slide. Um, we have uh, VM award, which is, as you remember, um, going through the recording crews, so it would have the specific delays. Uh, recorded. There is also some protection, uh, if you remember what we talked about, the high cardinality, so if there is a uh, problem uh, with, uh, yeah, if we introduced uh, uh, an erroneous config that uh, uh, would generate uh, millions upon millions of time series, there are uh, some limits here. I think there are some limits which uh, would there was ah it was here uh, 
this parameter, a similar parameter is actually uh, uh, present also on one of the VM inserter uh, storage components, but uh, it would say that uh, yeah, we cannot have more than this amount of series uh, recorded and uh, it would drop, drop this packet. So coming back on the storage problem where yeah, the write uh, time was uh, actually a problem for us. Uh, so uh, uh, Victoria Metrics allows for uh, scaling on the storage level, uh, having multiple storage nodes uh, and uh, having the VM insert component actually, actually share the data between them. So it would receive the data from VM agents in a row format, then uh, buffer it, uh, compress it so it's uh, more optimized, and then through its uh, uh, algorithm, which is actually some sort of uh, hashing function that would get the uh, result from uh, the function including name and labels, would uh, get the uh, destination storage node uh, for this particular data, and based on its replication factor, uh, we can uh, actually have uh, this data stored twice so that if we lose a storage node we still have the data available and yeah, all those things are configurable so at the end looking at the graphs uh, yeah, we were able to determine a good amount of uh, storage nodes that uh, would be able to handle handle our load and we went up uh, until eight or something like that so that was mostly some some of the interesting stuff that uh, we've hit during the implementation i can show you some of the other things so we do have every of the comp for every of the component there is a user interface uh, that we can utilize to test out our queries uh, there is uh, the standard component grafana which uh, yeah, given uh, it's uh, working with the same set of uh, metrics as prometheus we can reuse uh, standard dashboards for it there were some setbacks there uh, some minor differences but they are not not uh, worth mentioning we have both the vm alert uh, interface and alert manager which is the same component as for prometheus and you can see well, we have a lot of silences here because yeah uh, some of the alarms we expect like for example some of the api servers it's normal that they would not uh, respond with 200 okay typically they are an authorized because you don't have, have a, a black box exporter would won't have a access token or whatever doesn't query the actual real api and so on we started with uh, you know once deployed more than 1000 different alerts some of them were uh, real alerts some of them yeah, are such that uh, are just cannot be tested in this way so uh, we accept them and yeah I don't know how we're going to share the presentation, but I want to say that the list of useful links is actually useful. They're pretty good. So I strongly suggest you visit them out. Uh, they're both for, for Prometheus and Victoria metrics. And uh, if you haven't uh, dealt with that in such detail before, this is going to be very eye-opening, especially for people who are dealing with problematic Prometheus instances currently. Great, thank you. <clears throat> so, questions? Anyone? Sorry, yes, I was just, uh, just, I just thought maybe there's some way you raise your hand. And just, I just wanted to ask about, I mean, you know, Prometheus has been giving me issues, right? I I just wanted to ask, like the like um uh, memory usage historical uh for. For, for Victoria metrics yes this come by the way with uh, its set of uh, dashboards uh, where we can see various things I, I could uh, go into one of the standard dashboards and look uh, for Victoria but the good thing is that uh, because the work is split amongst many components uh, you would have each of the component footprint uh, as memory consumption. So you can see that uh, the total amount of memory is uh, rather big. But the good thing is that uh, yeah, you have this eight uh, storage, uh, VM storage components that land up on different nodes and kind of spread the load. So if 
go. I don't know for how many we have uh, maximum history. I, I think the retention was something like 30 days. Yes, so far, none of the individual components have ever reached the levels that Prometheus was reaching because the yeah. load is spread out. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. So that's what I wanted to see, uh, the spread of the memory. And I'm seeing even if you you combine the total data content in on what we are allocating to Prometheus, this is way mm -hmm. much better. This by, by the way, this also includes the node exporters, exporter and everything that <clears throat> is deployed in the namespace. If we take, for example, um, one of the heavier things like a VM storage node, uh, you can see that goes up to above three gigabytes, something like that. Maybe VM uh, agent is also one of the, I know, not. And, not and you have eight of these in this case. Yeah. So, the overall memory is going to be high, but it's going to be spread among uh, different instances. So thanks again, everyone.